You hear that? That's the sound of $600 depositing into your account. So what's the best way to spend it? Hi friends, I am Sarah, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet. And today we are going to talk about the best way to use your $600 stimulus check. Now, most Americans, as most of us know by now, are going to be receiving 600 smackaroonies. That's per adult and child qualified in the United States as a second stimulus. Fun fact, by the way, this stimulus is not considered taxable income. It's actually considered a tax credit and you can't be taxed on a tax credit. So the very first thing you shouldn't worry about with your stimulus check is having to pay taxes on it. You're free and clear. Congrats. So how you should spend your stimulus check very much depends on what your current financial situation is. So let's go through the major financial situations that you might find yourself in and depending on that, what the best way to spend your check is going to be. But first of all, for any financial situation, first thing you should do with your stimulus check is have a plan for how to spend it. You should really have a plan for how you spend your money overall, all of it, but definitely for this check. I can't tell you what you spent or previous stimulus on if you received one, but let's make sure that this one works for you. So first situation, if you are behind on your bills, the entire reason for this second round of stimulus checks and for the first round is because a lot of Americans have been vastly affected by the coronavirus pandemic and are struggling. You might have lost income, you might have lost your job, all sorts of horrible things. And if you're in this situation, I am so sorry for you. And I hate that the government thinks that $1,800 is enough. However, I am here to give you advice and help because I have been unemployed and not having any money coming in. And I remember how scary that is. Very scary. So if you're behind on your bills, you should consider paying back the high priority bills that are in your way that are potentially standing between your family not having like a home or electricity or water things like that that's incredibly important for credit cards and other bills before you make those payments go ahead and call those companies and explain your situation a lot of companies currently have financial hardship plans in place where they will eliminate late payment fees, they will eliminate interest, they will put you on a payment plan and keep your credit score from being affected and also keep your lights from getting switched off, everything like that. So if possible, get caught up a little bit on some of those back due bills and definitely negotiate to make sure that you're getting uh, as much for your money as you can and aren't being unduly penalized for your situation. Financial situation number two, if your job is or may be in jeopardy. So if you are currently working and you're, everything's going okay right now, but you think if there's even a hint somewhere in your brain where you're like, hmm, this job might be in trouble, then I want you to save this money. This is also what you're probably gonna wanna do if you are living paycheck to paycheck or currently have no savings at all. If this year has taught us anything, it's that we all just need a little bit more savings and potentially more than one stream of income, which is sad, but true. If you're gonna save this money, make sure to set it in a separate account than your general checking. But what are you gonna do with your stimulus money? Um, It's going, don't sniff my butt. It's going into the emergency fund. Woo! So put that money into a different account than you currently have your bills and income coming in and going out of and designate that just for emergencies for when crap hits the fan, all that jazz. Now, Christmas is not an emergency. Um, a new wardrobe is not an emergency, etc. Try to keep that money. And I say this from experience. I used to put money into savings only to pull it back out the next day. Take that money for a rainy day. Forget about it but it'll help you sleep better at night, I swear. I will have a couple of high yield saving account options down below that have no fees because if you're paying your bank fees to keep your money there, that's fast backwards. Don't do that. Don't give them more money. They don't need more money. You need more money. Okay, so financial situation number three. If your job is stable and you have a little bit of savings, but you have debt. So I recommend if you're in this situation, try to pay down some of your high interest debt first. So if you have credit cards that are charging you 
22% or something insane like that. Try to pay off as much of that balance as you can so that you'll have more money going forward on a monthly basis that isn't contributing just to interest on old debt and old stuff. High interest debt is the worst. If you don't have high interest debt, but you have low interest debt, like student loans, I would also recommend you take advantage of the current situation where all federal student loans are currently no interest, at least through the end of January, which means anything that you pay on your student loans is going to be a principal only payment and help bring down the balance so much. Absolutely take advantage of that if you don't have high interest debt and you're in a situation where you don't need to save it or pay back bills. You could also, if you're in this situation, use this money to save up for a future expense that you know that you're going to have and are gonna have a hard time getting a hold of it. You could put this into a sinking fund, maybe for uh, annual or biannual bills. You could contribute it to an HSA if you know you have medical stuff coming up. If your car is making a funny noise and you know that that is going to cost a chunk of chains, I would dip that. I would put that money into a dedicated sinking fund for that. Next financial situation, if you have a steady job income and plenty of emergency savings, here are a few options for you. First, for you, I would recommend that you consider saving this for retirement. You actually have until April 15th of this year to contribute to your Roth IRA maximum, which is a tax advantaged retirement account, which means any money that you put in is going to grow tax free until retirement. So your $600 could turn into many thousands of dollars by the time you retire. The limits for 2020, which is what we're working in right now, is $6,000 if you are under 50 years of age and $7,000 if you are over 50 years of age. If you feel good about your retirement contributions, you could invest it in a brokerage account. Now, if you are scared of the world of investing or if you're a newbie to this, I'm gonna give you one fund that I recommend, um, Vanguard's Total Stock Index ETF, which is an exchange traded fund. Um, if you're not familiar with that term, term, it's essentially a group of thousands of stocks. Now, this fund, incorporates and tracks the total stock market. So when you buy a share of this fund, it's like you're buying a share of the total stock market. So you're buying Google, you're buying Apple, you're buying Tesla. You're also buying all the other funds in the stock market. So when some are gonna go up, some are gonna go down, but it is a total stock market index fund and it's generally a good bet. It's very similar to a mutual fund or an index fund, but you buy it per, per share and therefore it's cheaper. So right now, the VTI is just under $200 per share, which means you could get three shares of VTI for the $600 stimulus you're getting. And historically, for the past 20 years, this fund has an average of over a little over 8% return, but over the past 10 years, it's ranged from 13 to 19% return per year, which means your money's gonna grow. Also, the fees are 0.03%. So if you want to not have to pay a lot of fees. That's awesome. This is also the ETF version of VT Sachs, <laughs> which is the index fund a lot of personal finance professionals swear by. I have a few shares of VT Sachs and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. Next up, you could also invest this money in yourself. Say you have like a big money goal like purchasing real estate or starting a business uh, you could use this money for additional education but, and this six hundred dollars could be used to invest in yourself which will definitely return some nice dividends the next thing that you could do with this six hundred dollar stimulus is to save it for your children so you could put this $600 into a 529 educational savings plan, and that will also grow tax-free. It's a tax-advantaged account so that your little ones, once they go off to college, will have some of that money there to pay for them. You could also try to support your local economy by purchasing some gift cards from some local restaurants or shops that you know have been affected by the pandemic. If you're gonna do this, make sure to support small local businesses, I promise you Walmart is doing fine. <laughs> and finally, if you're in this category like I am, you're extremely lucky. And there are a lot of people that aren't 
so lucky. You could consider donating some or all of your $600 stimulus. Food banks in particular are really, really hurting right now with so many people out of work. And I'm sure your local food bank would absolutely love and utilize your donation to feed so many more people than you think. But you could also donate it to whatever organization, charity, person, group that is close to your heart. And I'm sure it'll be a big help. A note that if you do decide to donate your stimulus, you can deduct a portion of it off of your 2020 or 2021 tax return. And that's even if you claim the standard deduction. There is a new thing called an above the line deduction for 2020 and 2021, where you can donate up to $300 cash. It does have to be cash and utilize that as a tax deduction on your taxes. Of course, you can also claim that as a donation if you itemize. So regardless of how you choose to spend your stimulus, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to create a plan for it before that money even hits your account and certainly before you spend it. Let me know what you will be using it for if you're qualified or tell me what you would use it for if you were down below. Thank you for watching this video. I sincerely hope it helped. I make videos on personal finance every single week. So make sure to like this video and to subscribe for more money talks. I will see you guys next time. Bye.